Hello and welcome back. This is MC1 Gamer bringing you another battle report. So this time I am diving into bolt action. So if anybody's been a subscriber or a follower of the channel, you know that I've, you know, I've posted previously that I've been, you know, getting into historical in the interim between, you know, Warhammer Fantasy editions. Um, so bolt action, you know, just really resonated. I like the um, smaller uh, 15 mil, not Flames of War, but I like the battleground system from Iron Fist Publishing. But you know, I saw a bunch of guys playing bolt action at 28 mil. And I just, I kind of liked it. I mean, I like that there's, you know, there's, it may not be as large scale in terms of, you know, large battles, but, you know, just, I like the, I like the system. So I gave it a shot and I purchased a, uh, you know, some, some U.S. Uh, um, units that you'll see in just a minute. Um, and this is like, only my second game, so I'm still learning and I'm still painting up the, uh, uh, my own particular army. But this is a thousand point game uh, versus uh, one of the other guys at the local club, Dan, who has a Waffen SS, um, a, army which you know he breaks into a couple of different lists this is a one of his fast moving very highly mobile lists so here's what i've been about so far um i built i, I started out with a 500 point para um paratrooper um box set and that gave me enough that i could you know i could feel a number of different units i could feel at least a, you know two squads and i had a couple other options like a bazooka team a light mortar team uh a 75 millimeter howitzer um and uh you know lmg but um i supplemented that with a hellcat which i thought really fit with the theme i really wanted kind of a brand band of brothers um, feel to it um highly mobile and I like the fact that it was a recon uh, element that had a heavy, um, heavy anti-tank gun. And uh, then I bought the uh, Ranger box, which gives me a whole wealth of options. Uh, I can. I can I, I can field an engineer unit uh, with some options. I could field a second uh, bazooka team. I've got a flamethrower uh, um, that I can put in the engineer unit or not. I can field two two different squads of rangers or one you know large one and one small one, um, or I could put them in as uh, as as standard infantry. So there's a lot of options with all the bits, especially the metal bits. To really customize them, and I think that between the para box and the ranger box, I just really have all I need with the infantry. I probably could supplement it a little more, but from this point, I think I'm just going to try and add on maybe a few more vehicles: jeep, um, a greyhound, uh, maybe a half track. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go with a Sherman, but at some point, I'm sure I'll pick one up. Who? Can, how can you not have a Sherman? Um, but this is really what I'm starting with. So the foundation of what I'm looking at at a thousand points is one unit of engineers with a flamethrower and a couple of um, a couple of uh, BARs one unit of rangers, one unit of para, and then a bunch of teams, and the Hellcat. So we'll see what kind of options I adjust to down the road. So here's the board, and you know the, the, the local gaming store against, again, it's uh, Somerville, New Jersey, uh, the only game in town. There's a bunch of places I play, but this is one of the more common ones. They have some great terrain, um, and you know, a bunch of boards, and a lot of room, and you know, depending on the night, you know, there's a lot of different types of games that are played. Uh, so, you know, there's about five or six guys are doing an Escalation League. Um, they already had this terrain set, set up when they were finished, and uh, me and uh, one of the guys, Dan, decided to throw down for a game, and we rolled up a six. And now, this is, provides uh, the need for uh, objectives. So you have to put in one, um, an objective on either side of the board. Each person places it when they place half their their squads half their units and the other half are in reserve and this has to be within six inches of your oh, excuse me it has to be no closer than six inches from your board edge uh, and uh, if you any either if the other your, your opponent winds up in base to base contact with this objective at the end of any turn the game's over and it's a victory so uh, this is where Dan had placed his and his Waffen SS he starts putting down some of his units. Um, he's got what I believe is an, M an, an MMG, a medium machine gun unit. Um, could be an HMG. I doubt it. I think it's an MMG. Um, and then he's got a, a sniper uh, team in the forest. And you can see just in the upper right there, he's got a, a veteran, uh, just behind the hedgerows, a veteran uh, um a team a infantry squad which has um, a couple of it's actually they have a special rule for the Germans where they could take an extra um, LMG so he's got two LMGs he's got uh, some artillery piece up there it's a fixed weapon um, I think it might be a medium uh, size it's not a heavy howitzer uh, and then he's got a um, uh, it must be at least a medium it could be a, a heavy but a medium uh, mortar um, and then he has in reserve, he's got a half track, which inside has a pioneer group, which I guess is another veteran type group, as well as his um, command, which is a lieutenant with an extra soldier. And he's got another veteran squad, again, with two LMGs. 
and a uh, Puma, which is just you know a fantastic, uh, a fantastic vehicle. Everybody, just as much as people rave about the Hellcat, which is what I have, um, people love the Puma, and it's an armored uh, um, car, so you can take you can take that and a tank and a half track. <laughs> so it's really really good. Amazing that it, they they made so few of them in, in World War II, but every German list has a, has a Puma. Um, so that's his reserves. And here's my uh, deployment, and this is from right to left. I put my ranger squad kind of out in the middle. And please forgive that a lot of this stuff isn't fully painted yet. Again, we're, f we're really beginning, we're starting this Escalation League, and we're really putting in incentives for everybody to paint stuff over the course of uh, each week. If you bring in a new unit, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get some bonuses in the Escalation League. And we're going to start from, I think, 500 points and just ramp up 250 points um, every week. So um, I'm just starting to put everything together and then, you know, starting to base. And a couple of these things are actually painted, um, or at least in the early stages of painting. So you'll see some improvements, certainly, as we go through the battle report. So I put this Ranger unit r really out in the open, but within striking distance of getting into where one of the... One of the uh, um, terrain pieces are for uh, heavy cover because the ranger lead the way uh, special rule allows you to get that free move before the game starts so um, I just I, I know they're not going to get um, get hit I mean if I was facing somebody that had some kind of a, or, or, or a uh, um, a uh, scenario that had maybe a pre-bombardment before the game started or something that would probably be a bad move um, but you know this is this is where this is what I deployed and I took my chances uh, I have an engineer unit with a flamethrower and two BARs over there behind heavy cover next to the building and then I have a 75 millimeter para veteran howitzer um, behind heavy cover next to this building. I've got a sniper team uh, on the um, upstairs of the building, and then there's my Hellcat. So it's f situated well behind uh, the uh, the building for he for hard cover and for blocking line of sight. And I can pop in and out as I need to. So this is what I have in reserve. I've got from uh, from right to left. I've got my um, second lieutenant with an extra soldier. I've got a um, light uh, mortar, uh, a um, a forward observer uh, for airstrikes, a medic, and then a unit of para, which is about I think it's nine strong, eight plus the NCO, and in that is an LMG, uh, and that that's basically it. So you know, pretty well rounded uh, um, team, a, a lot of infantry, and plenty of stuff that's still off the board. And then I put my uh, objective way back in, obviously, my in the center of the border, but it was really surrounded by three different pieces of terrain. You know, one in the center, as you can see, the, you know, the building, there was a, um, a forest on one side with a, with a fence, and then another building on the other. So it's going to be really tough with all the things that I should have occupying all these terrain pieces for him to get anything in there without really getting blown up or severely debilitated. Um, so I had my first move, and as I had, you know, pre-planned, I have my uh, my ranger squad was able to get well into this fantastic entrenchment area here, um, so I'm really right up in my in my opponent's grill, uh, not quite within 12 inches, but still close enough that I can do some serious damage. So turn one, and my opponent pulls the first order die. Sorry for the blurry picture, uh, and he puts it on his howitzer and he fires to no effect. Um, and then he puts his next order die um, on his uh, MMG, um, and that, I believe, also misses. Uh, then my, uh, my rangers um, go ahead and um, get a fire order, and they only put one pin down on this, uh, this veteran unit here on the other side of the hedgerow, but I'm fine with that. And uh, he goes ahead and uh, shoots with his sniper, which puts a pin marker on my uh, engineer unit, and you're going to find he's really focusing on this engineer unit. He's really concerned about the uh, flamethrower. Um, and then I go and put a, uh, a, a an advance order, or rather a run order, on my uh, my engineer unit. I was looking to put it right behind the uh, rangers so they could go and advance up together. Um, and uh, of course, with a pin already on it, and they're they're only regulars. Uh, of course. Sure enough, I rolled. Uh, I failed the order check, and of course, they had then had to go down, which really is really is sad because I need to get these guys up close in order to get that flamethrower to work. So he puts in a fire order with his um, MMG, and um, he misses. Um, I then go put a fire order on my sniper, and I'm looking to try and take out his sniper as quickly as possible. I don't want him, you know, starting to you know trying to ruin my day with uh, taking out my flamethrower or any of my LMGs. And unfortunately, um, I, I miss, 
and then um, I put a fire order in with my howitzer and uh, that also misses no excuse me that doesn't miss the howitzer I aim it at the, his sniper um, I'm able to kill his spotter and put a couple of, uh, of uh, pins on his uh, on his sniper and I'm really looking to suppress this sniper but if I can get another shot in at the very least I can uh, I can I can remove this from the game and that will be a, a, a big effect um, he then puts a fire order on his um, on his veteran uh, um, unit, and uh, that then ta he, he fires it at my rangers. I lose a guy and get a pin. I'm not overly concerned. I mean, it's a ranger unit. I'm sure that um, you know they're already at a ten. That should probably uh, be be just fine. Next advanced order is my Hellcat, though. So I move it up and I try to open up on his, trying to suppress his howitzer and open up with the HMG on his veteran unit. But unfortunately, I don't do a whole lot. So we go to turn two. Now, um, he brings on his Puma and advances, and of course his main focus with this is to go after my Hellcat. This is really kind of the battle. We had a previous game, same thing, you know, it was just the battle of the Reckies. Um, so he shoots at my Hellcat, and of course, you know, I, I'm lucky enough that I got this guy to go early in the game um, so that I was able to get his shot off. So I Recky back um, out of uh, line of sight where he couldn't see me and uh, couldn't shoot. And then I managed to uh, get my, uh, my from reserves my LT and the extra soldier, and I run them right into the building. They were able to make it from the board edge. And they're going to probably be able to help some of these infantry units that I'm sure are going to get shot up a little bit. So he brings on his, um, his half-track, and inside that half-track is the Pioneer unit, which has the Flamer and his, um, his LT. He also issues a fire order um, with uh, with his um, MMG. Um, it he, again, he's trying to focus in on my engineers. I get another pin. I lose another guy. I put a fire order in. Sorry for the upside down picture um, on my howitzer. And again, my howitzer just you know uh, really bean lines for this uh, sniper and obliterates him, which is awesome. Now I don't have to worry about his sniper. Uh, then I managed to get on my power unit. Now this is all the way off to the right, um, excuse me, to the left side of the board. I mean, I have a couple of units already on the right side, um, so I run this on, and I figure that I can advance and shoot up against this wall um, in the follow-up turns. But I also, these guys have tank hunters, so do the rangers, so they can attack um, his um, his armored vehicles. And I wanted to kind of surround him with one of these, you know, good decent-sized units on either side of the board, kind of roughly in the middle of those, you know, halves. And uh, that way, you know, I can corral him in the center, and if he tries to, you know, maneuver around, I'll get these guys within range that they can do something. At least it, it'll cause him some issues and try to change up his strategy. So he puts a fire order with his mortar, and he um, takes out my uh, my howitzer. So goodbye howitzer. It's unfortunate. I think he did his job. I don't know if he paid his points, but he did a pretty good job. So I fire order on my rangers against his veteran unit. These guys are just going to clash for most of the game. Um, I'm able to put a pin on him. I might have taken out one of his guys. Um, you know, I had uh, an LMG and a bunch of rifles, and I wasn't in range for my submachine gun. Um, and then I put in a run order with my engineers, and I run those guys up right behind the ranger unit. So I'm going to look to continue to advance these guys again, try to get in range with that. Uh, with that flamer, um, but then he's going to have to make a choice. Who's he going to try and suppress? Who's he going to try and thin out? His next order to die brings on his other veteran unit, um, but they're all the way on the far left side, which is really just going to try to keep my power unit in check, which is a smart move. And then he issues a fire order with his veterans. He was able to pass his, uh, his morale check, which removes the pin. Um, but he didn't have any uh, impact. Um, I think he went also after my engineer. He might have gone after the ranger unit. He puts another order die onto his howitzer, which doesn't do anything. It misses. And then um, I put in... I'm able to get on the board my um, my my light uh, mortar, and I run that into cover here, where I'm going to be able to control a good portion of the middle of the board. Only 24-inch range, um, but I'm okay with that, and if I need to, you know, maneuver and relocate, um, I should have some good options. Um, and then I'm able to also get another order and bring on my medic, so I want to try and run him up where I can, he can get close to either or both of those infantry units and try and help with his six-up save against any wounds. 
Um, I try to bring on my uh, bazooka, and the theory was I was going to try and run him up into the center and leave him in the building or behind one of the hard cover areas. That way I can cover the middle of the board with his 24-inch range. So again, I have the two anti, um, the two tank hunter uh, veteran units on either side of the board, the, the uh, bazooka in the center, um, my Hellcat, which can help as well with that. Unfortunately, I've already lost my howitzer, but I have a lot of options, um, and that was the idea. But of course, I failed. I failed the roll to try and get this on. And I made a mistake in deployment. This is my forward observer. I was able to get him on the board and put him into position where he could see just about anything in the battlefield, and he's behind heavy cover. But I should have started with him. I only had five units that I could deploy based on the scenario. And the rule is, and I, of course, you know, again, I'm learning. I didn't know this, is that you have to have a um, your your forward observers on the board for a full turn before they can actually issue an order. So uh, unfortunately, they, he just came on this turn, so I have to wait another turn. So it's going to be turn three before I can hope to have my first of hopefully two um, uh, uh, airstrikes. So I get another order, um, and I had 11 total order dice to my opponent's 10, <clears throat> and I fire with my, uh, with my sniper looking to try and remove one of the um, uh, LMGs in the veteran unit, but I only put on a, um, a pin, which was good because he had removed the previous pin. Now we get to turn three. So turn three, he gets to th put in an advance order on his half track, moving up, um, and uh, I, my, ne my next order is my uh, Hellcat. Now, you know, this, I, I decided that I would maneuver him around, even though I was showing my uh, flank here, which is a much thinner armor uh, for the Hellcat. But I figured, you know, I want to shoot. I want to get into a position where I can um, try to blow up that half track and then shoot something else with the H HMG. And if I needed to, I can recce back. And you see that building up in the upper um, right corner. I could recce back behind that. So I positioned it within that my free. My only. You know, I only have one 90 degree pivot, but it gave me a good option. You know, with nine nine inches of, of maneuvering uh, backwards, that I would be able to do that. So I did that, but unfortunately, um, I missed with all the shots. And then I put a fire order on the Rangers, again, against his that veteran unit on the other side of the hedges. Um, I'm able to take off, I think, a casualty and put in, again, another pin. Another uh, order from my sniper, which, again, puts another pin. I'm not sure if I did any casualties, but now he's up to three pins. And then I advance up my engineer squad. Now, I'm still not in range for this flame, uh, the, the uh, flame or the flamethrower, uh, but I want to try, again, I'm just trying to, trying to, I, I figured maybe I could run and get in that building, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I was, you know, trying to push that veteran squad down as much as possible and hopefully lock it up for the remainder of the game. So I figured I'd take a chance and just, you know, get some of the BARs and uh, rifle shots, um, which doesn't really work out too well. Uh, I don't think I was able to successfully get any major hits. Put a fire order then on the uh, mortar, which doesn't get misses. It only needed a six up, but you know the um, it needs to be um, it needs to shoot at something that's a stationary object uh, from for the next turn for that to improve. Um, I advance up the uh, the paratroopers now to the wall and takes a couple of shots at his uh, his advancing elite unit on the left side of the board. I'm only able to do a pin. Uh, so then he puts in a, um, an advance order. Now we have some local rules. We have some rules that we've, you know, the you know uh, the the the, uh, the website for um, boltaction.net has a couple of house rules that they suggest that a lot of people have adhered to. But there's some local rules that we also have, and one of them is that a fixed weapon can pivot 90 degrees and still shoot but at a minus one. Now, I don't think it's that much of a real debilitating effect, and it's seriously an impact uh, of a benefit to fixed weapons that only have that 45 degree view, uh, view and if you, if you pivot it, you just can't shoot at all. Minus one isn't that great, but you know, that's the house rule, and there's a bunch of them. They're not terribly crazy. Um, they do have some effect uh, that, to help, I guess, you know, balance out a little bit of the game. Some things are just not worth taking. So um, we have a couple that we came up with um, that I'm learning, uh, and there's a few that they've uh, that has been have been incorporated by the website. So he puts in an advance, he makes his order check, and he pivots, and he blasts at my engineers. Now they're a little bit in the open. I kind of figured this was a little bit of a risk, um, but I, I, I didn't really mind that the engineers might get 
heavily targeted because it would also help free up my rangers from to not get targeted. So I lose a bunch of guys, get an extra uh, pin, and you know I'm okay with that. Uh, they still I still have my uh, flamer and, and the BARs. So he puts an advance order on the um, the uh, HMG or M MMG, and I guess this was a similar situation where he could pivot it. I don't think he moved it at all. He just pivoted it to change his 45 degree arc, um, and he shoots also at the um, at the uh, uh, engineer unit, which I I'm not sure if he was he should have been able to, given the line of sight that the Rangers were supposedly able to were supposed to be blocking. I'm guessing he may have been able to see enough of them um, uh, over the top of that uh, that that terrain structure there, the uh, sandbags. But I take another pin. Uh, fortunately, don't lose any other guys. Uh, he um, then issues a rally order on his veteran group that I've just been pummeling with uh, with uh, pins. And, uh, of course, he makes the damn roll, and that removes all the pins. So now this veteran unit that I thought I had locked down is now back in action with no pins. His next fire uh, order um, was from the uh, mortar, and the mortar misses. And then he um, puts a fire order on the puma. Uh, so he tries to again, once again, shoot at my uh, Hellcat. So I do what any good Hellcat would do. I recce back. Now, the problem with wrecking back is that um, you only can go nine inches, but I had already pre-planned and had well, you know, plenty of room to recce behind the building. You can't see it. It's just above that, um, that objective, the tree objective that we have. Uh, the thing is, is that that building has a bunch of windows that you can see through. Now, they're not perfectly lined up, so they really kind of block a lot of line of sight unless you have a really good angle. And even then, it's not a lot. Now, I'm not really sure what the rules are, and we just went with, you know, how, you know, Dan, who's played, he's played about eight or ten games. This is only my second. He was pretty certain that you just really need to see a sliver of the tank. Um, you could see just the treads, as long as it's not just like the tip of the of the cannon, uh, of the of the main gun. Uh, if you saw a good, you know, you know like a, a sliver of the hull, you'd be fine. Which doesn't make any sense to me. I have absolutely, I'm absolutely sure that an anti tank round would just blast right through that building and be able to hit blow up a, a, another vehicle, which is fine. But it, you know, the line of sight rule just seems a little wonky to me if that's how it works. Um, but we just went with it. You know, again, he just really saw kind of like a razor's edge between, the, you know, between the uh, the panes of both windows of my hull and that allowed him to shoot um which you know i'm gonna i'll check on i'll go back to if anybody knows exactly what the official rules are of that uh i just haven't had a chance to check the book um so uh i i just seem to remember and maybe i'm thinking of a different game and i have too many games in my head i'm thinking that there's a you need to see at least half of the actual hull of the of the vehicle uh but again that might not be accurate so he shoots, and he needed a six. I wasn't too worried about it because he you know, had all the terrain long range. He needed a six, and he gets a six. And you know, he's got my uh, my uh, my side hull, which is you know paper thin, and of course it blows up my Hellcat. So the, <laughs> that's the end of my damn Hellcat. Um, and I issue a run order to uh, the um, the medic, trying to get him again within range of both of these units. And then I issue another uh, order for uh, for my my LT and him and the extra guy. I just figured I'd support these guys. I already got a bunch of uh, pins on the engineer unit. If I, as long as I can get these guys, you know, the LT within range, he's not going to be able to cover the whole board. He can at least support uh, both of these units and help them rally if need be and remove some pin markers or just keep, you know, the orders coming. I'm able to finally get my bazooka team on. Uh, so they run up to this position uh, near the center. And then I'm able to issue a fire order with my uh, with my spotter uh, for an airstrike for the following turn. He issues a uh, oh wait uh, the, I, I place the marker on his veteran unit. I mean again this <laughs> this unit I just want to get rid of. It's really close with that the, the dual M LMGs. Um, I want to get rid of it. Uh, and uh, you know I've already taken out one LMG with the sniper previously, which I think I forgot to mention. You know he was able to keep one of the, you know the support guy, but still um, I wanted to get rid of uh, this one, and it was really well situated next to like three or four of his units. 
So he issues a advance order with the Pioneer unit that was in the half track, and I just I misjudged the distance. I really wasn't sure uh, that he was going to be within 12 inches, uh, that he could march somebody out and still shoot them. Uh, otherwise, I probably would have assaulted previously with my Rangers on that unit. I mean, they are tank hunters. It just looked like it was like 14 inches, but we did measure it, and yep, it was 12 inches uh, from the edge of the uh, half track, which is where you measure apparently from, and that, you know, for the six inch move of the unit and then his flamer was within uh, just within six inches to touch the uh, the uh, ranger that has the smg at the uh, at the bottom of, of the screen and he obliterates the unit <laughs> the freaking flamers are unbelievable now i completely forgot that i had a medic within range and that may or may not have helped i don't know if it would have helped tell her terribly i may not have wiped out the whole unit but the unit was pretty crippled uh with all the uh, pins and losses that ensued i probably would have lost the unit anyway so he puts a fire order on his veteran unit and that was to no effect so uh turn four comes and down the artillery barrage which you know puts a few pins on a bunch of his units which was excellent and it really puts a hurting on this central veteran unit uh, several pins and he fails his morale and those guys just you know break and run so that's great look I lost one ranger unit he lost a veteran unit um, I'm still a little behind here um, I'm down uh, um, you know to uh, my howitzer and my uh, my uh, hellcat uh, and my ranger unit to his veteran unit and his sniper unit. He's definitely got the advantage right now, but I'm just glad that, you know, I cleaned out this, this, this one unit here that was just, you know, giving me fits early on. He puts a fire order on his howitzer and starts shooting up at the, uh, the, the engineer unit. Um, he only gets one pin. Uh, I don't lose anybody. But I try to give them an advance order so I can get within range to just wipe out that, uh, that, a pioneer unit with the flamer and of course you know with all the pins even though my LT was right nearby I just rolled terribly I rolled a, a 10 I mean I think I needed like a 5 or a 6 anyway uh, but I certainly didn't even come close which is you know unfortunate so I put in a fire order with the uh, with the my sniper and I'm able to put a pin on his pioneer unit I figured look <laughs> I, I, I want to try and at least suppress these guys and you know pinning is the and morale is the name of the game so he puts a run order with this uh, half track and he zooms all the way down the field and now he's within range of the objective uh, the objective right behind that house to the uh, right that you can just see a little bit of uh, this is a big problem I mean that's the issue with roads and wheeled vehicles especially they can really boogie so he's now in a threatening position and you know while I have things all the way on each side uh, I've got another I've got some assets in the center that I can take this thing out with um, but you know I just I ha now I have to focus everything on this half track otherwise he'll just take the game so I move up the uh, bazooka just around the corner and just get a beautiful shot of his flank. Um, excellent shot. Um, if I'm able to hit, you know, I, I should have a really easy chance of blowing right through that armor, and that could just change the absolute game. And of course, I miss. <laughs> of course, I miss. So I'll have other opportunities, but you know, that was that was. I think that was a game that could have been a game breaker if I had taken that out. I think I might have actually not maybe not game, broken the game, but I certainly would have swung it a little bit more in my favor. He goes and put it, uh, puts a fire order on his on his mortar team. Uh, doesn't do anything. He tries to advance up his puma. Um, which already has a couple of pins on it from the uh, from the uh, airstrike, and he fails. So he has to issue it a down order. So the Puma's uh, uh, useless for this turn. Um, I was initially going to launch an assault with my tank hunting paratroopers at that half track, and I would have just wiped it out. And he's even got his LT in there as well. <coughs> and th then we weren't really sure of it, so we looked it up. Turns out, if it's a run uh, order on a vehicle, you cannot assault it. It's just moving too quick, too quickly. 
So that really sucked. <laughs> so I, I did nothing I can do. I just decided to uh, put in a fire order. Um, I didn't want to take a chance of um, of the moving fire, and I've, um, that may have been a mistake. I have enough shots here that I probably could have just advanced a little bit and still, you know, uh, put myself in a position to get closer to him for the following turn. Uh, but you know, I'm 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 hitting with essentially with just you know. Uh, with uh, uh, spitballs here on the side of his uh, tank, I think I would need like a six to to penetrate it, uh, maybe a five. But even with all these shots, uh, just wasn't able to do it. Just put a few pins on. So he's got a couple pins on there. You know, maybe I can um, prevent him from moving if I get enough pins on, so that he can stay there within range, so I can assault him in the next turn. And uh, I go ahead and issue a fire order uh, against those pioneers with my LT. Um, I just I just try and take a few guys down, try and put a few pins on, just to prevent him from just obliterating my engineer unit. And uh, put a fire order with the mortar, which I think fails to do anything. And then move my medic up to do the same. He gets two pistol shots, which is awesome. Um, and the medic, I've totally forgot about the medic um, previously, and apparently he forgot his his uh, his doctor bag, but he definitely brought his pistol because when he shot, he was able to put not only a pin on but actually kill a guy, which I think was fantastic. You know, definitely you know paid his way right there. So the Pioneer unit goes ahead and tries to uh, uh, issue a fire order, and of course, because of four pins, fails, so he has to issue a down order. And I forget what unit was, I didn't I, I missed the picture, but he actually shoots with something and was able to kill the uh, loader for the bazooka, which has a double impact. Because, you know, not only do I get a pin from the uh, effect, but when you have a team that's missing one guy, you have an additional minus one uh, in, in successive turns. So this is really just a minus two. Luckily, they're veterans, but again, minus two. Um, I issue the uh, order for an airstrike, and I center it on his puma. I want to get rid of this thing. And then he orders a run. Or he puts a run order on his left-handed uh, veteran team, uh, which you know doesn't really have that much of an impact. He's really well out of the fight. I'm already moving my paras up towards the center to try and take out that half track. So turn five, and I'm able to get a number of pins from my airstrike uh, before I'm able. You know, luckily I rolled the four up to actually issue uh, the order, and uh, you can see that I have like I have six pins on his puma, six pins on the pioneer group, and a couple of pins on his mortar. So that was very effective. And then when we actually show how many hits and damage, I wipe out the puma. So that was great. I was thrilled about that. Um, he then issues a run order with his half track, and he's got a couple of pins on there, but he only needs to roll an eight. It. So he runs right up to the objective, and that changes everything. Now I have to destroy this thing. Just immobilizing it or, you know, just bombarding it with pins is not going to make a difference. I need to blow this thing up. I have a couple of things that can do it, but, you know, it's, it, it's going to be a task. So um, I go ahead and uh, try to put an order on the bazooka who could swing around and get a beautiful flank shot again. And, of course, I'm down to, I need an eight. I roll a nine, so I can't even get the bazooka to go and do his job. Uh, absolutely unfortunate. Um, he was in the perfect place now twice and failed both times. So I advance up the uh, the paras. Uh, it really wouldn't have mattered, I guess, if I had moved the paras, if I advanced the paras up previously, uh, because I wouldn't have been in striking range to actually assault the half track. Um, but I go ahead and shoot it, and I'm not able to destroy it. I just put a bunch of pins on it. Um, uh, I'm able. He tries to issue a, an order with his. Um, his pioneers again. They have a ton of pins, so they're not able to do much. Uh, I advance now. I'm not worried about the pioneers now. They're they've got six pins on them. They're going to have a hard time rallying. I go ahead and move my engineers with an advance order. I'm able to successfully uh, get the order um, in because my LT was there, and lose one of the pins and and uh, move them up uh, six inches. And then I'm within range, not with not for the flamer, but with for the two BARs to go shoot at his uh hit the half track but i've got still got three pins and this is a regular unit so i'm missing a lot and i don't do anything uh, i'm just 
going down the row, just trying to get as many shots in on this half track as possible. I decide with my uh, uh, sniper, I'm going to take a pot shot. Maybe I can, you know, hit a hit a gas tank. So I'd shoot. Um, and now I got five pins, but I need five more in order to stop this guy because, you know, he's he's a, it, it's considered veteran. It's got ten uh, ten on the uh, order um, on the morale. Um, I issue a fire order with my LT and his extra guy. They both have rifles, trying to shoot at the half track. To no avail. He's got six pins now. <laughs> um, and he issues an order with his howitzer, uh, tries to target um, my uh, engineers, uh, which, you know, I, he only gets an extra, he adds a few pins on. Not a big deal. It's not going to really matter at this point. And, you know, my medic is not going to be able to affect the half-track, so just, I actually thought about assaulting this unit until I learned what the assaulting rules were. I figured this guy, these guys are, you know, on the ropes, maybe this, this medic will come in, you know, pull out his, uh, his bayonet or, uh, you know, his, uh, his, you know, he maybe he's got a dagger or something and just sweep through these guys or pump, you know, shoot them up with pistols. But no, uh, that's not going to work. Uh, that would have been absolutely amazingly bad and bad idea. So I just sit back and shoot. And once again, <laughs> I take down a guy and add another pin onto this unit, which was awesome. So the medic actually proved his worth, not as a medic, but as an actual infantryman. And he puts another advance order on his veteran unit that was all the way off to the left. They really haven't done much. They really haven't paid their way. Um, but, you know, they go ahead and they uh, they look to shoot. Don't do anything. I The last thing I've got is this, uh, it was my... Uh, my my um, observer, my forward observer. Terrible picture here. My, I'm sorry. I swung them around the bottom of the uh, building with an advance order. I was able to get a shot off at long range uh, and didn't do it. <laughs> He's got seven pins on him. I needed three more. Didn't happen. Uh, I have a, a mortar unit, but they're just too close to do anything, so I issue a, fi issue a fire order, just hoping to do some damage. Missed. He did the same thing with his uh, his medium machine gun unit. Didn't do anything. Uh, wasn't able to hit. And that's how we ended the game. So here's the board at the end of the game. Uh, you can see where everything is positioned. He wins the game using very good sound tactics. He saw a hole in my defense. Um, I made a couple mistakes. Had a couple of unfortunate rolls. Uh, you know, I think I you know having the um, the bazooka in the middle uh, worked fairly well but unfortunately he just you know he just didn't those guys just you know didn't get enough sleep the night before and i rolled poorly uh i had a reasonable good reasonable strategy made a couple of good moves made a couple of uh, bad ones i'll be learning and uh, certainly painting up more good game for uh, to dan and uh you know he definitely uh, has a very fast moving list that is punishing if you can't you know if you can't take out these units you've really gotta you really gotta um you know put the you know put a stop on him at least you know try to uh, uh, put a hold on one side of the board and uh, maybe some, maybe my next tactic would be to you know try to sweep across the board and you know you make his, some of his units ineffective like I did with that veteran unit off to the left hope you liked it guys more to come there's uh, more time is coming up with an escalation with not an escalation with a league uh, within the next month. This is an escalation league that's going to start also within the next couple of weeks, and we're going to be starting at 500 points, increasing it to 250 each week um, with you know benefits for you know for painting units and the like. And uh, you know we're gonna um, I've also got uh, um, uh, Warhammer Fantasy with ninth edition that's going to come up, so I'll be issuing more of those. You know, my computer's back in action, uh, and hopefully I'll be updating, you know, camera at some point. But if you guys like what you see, you know, feel free to comment, uh, feel free to subscribe uh, if you want to, you know, see more of uh, my content. And if you have any suggestions about what to add on to uh, the bolt action list that I have, uh, I'm more. I'm very open. We're going to be going from 500 all the way to 1250. I'm looking to add in a Greyhound. I'm looking to add in a Jeep, either as a tow for my howitzer, or with a, with a 30 cal, uh, maybe to shuttle around my LT for you know wherever he needs his uh, morale boost, uh, and maybe even a half track uh, just to you know carry those engineers so they can you know do the same thing that his pioneers did uh you know just dump them out further up on the board uh and uh, i might get a sherman i was thinking of getting a sherman crocodile because we're doing kind of early-ish war and like up to you know i think up to 1942 
and I like the idea of a flamer on a uh, on a tank. Um, but I, you know, that's definitely bottom of the list. Uh, I don't know if I'll be enhancing more infantry units. I may get a couple more teams. I need an LMG to stick in with the Rangers. But if you guys have any thoughts about you know effective lists or ideas with the stuff that I have and with some suggestions about what to pick up, feel free to put them in the in the uh, in the comments. Uh, and uh, you know, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.